We lack the purity of heart that we need. We lack that. We don't have that in and of ourselves apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. So, uh, Proverbs uh, chapter 20 verse 9 says, Who can say, I have made my heart clean? I am pure from my sin. Who could say that? Who could say I'm pure from sin? Who could say I've made my heart clean? Well, the answer to that is nobody. The answer to that is none of us. There's none of us who could say that. There is none of us who is without sin. No one has a pure heart in and of ourselves. As a matter of fact, Jesus Christ had this to say in Mark chapter 7 and verse number 20. And He said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, and foolishness. All these things, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. So the problem is not on the outside, but the problem is on the inside. That's what the Bible teaches. We all by nature have defiled hearts. We all by nature have hearts that are corrupted because of sin. When I look in my own heart, I can see the seeds of sin inside of my life. What about you? I mean, are your thoughts... Are you going to be so high-minded as to say that your thoughts always line up with Philippians chapter 4 where the Bible says whatsoever things are just and pure, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are, are a good report, do you think like that perfectly 24-7? Or are you all like me and you'd rather not other people know some of the stuff that runs through your mind sometimes? I mean, it's all a good thing to understand and know that you need a pure heart and if we're honest with ourselves and if we're honest before God today, we're going to admit and acknowledge that we lack exactly that thing that we need. So what's the solution? What's the answer to this? Where do we get this purity of heart? Where do we find it at? Well, the Old Testament answer to that was to employ a professional substitute. Someone else to come along and do the job for you. And we do the same thing in other areas of life. I'll give you another illustration from my own life today. And I'm just going to be very honest with you. I'm not much of a plumber. I'm not much of an electrician. I'm not much of an auto mechanic. I'm fairly useful in some things. But when it comes to plumbing, if I try to take on a plumbing job, what usually happens as a result is water gushes out all over the floor. Job. That's what usually happens. I'm not a plumber. Not an electrician. Not, a, not an auto mechanic. I can do about anything with drywall. I'm handy in some things. But when it comes to plumbing, I'll just be honest with you. What I would rather do is just call a professional in, somebody who knows the tricks of the trade, somebody who's already made all of the sacrifices, somebody who knows what needs to be done so that when the job is finished, the water is not gushing out all over the floor, but the water is flowing like it ought to flow. So this illustration provides an, an, an analogy for what the high priest was to Israel back in the Old Testament. He was a specialist. That high priest was a professional substitute. It was his job to keep himself pure on behalf of the people. As a matter of fact, in later times we're told that the people went to enormous lengths to make sure that that high priest kept himself pure. As a matter of fact, the day before the biggest festival day of the year, the Day of Atonement, the high priest would stay up all night long. He wouldn't even go to sleep because he was afraid that when he fell asleep, he might have some kind of sinful dream. It was a big deal. They took it seriously. As a matter of fact, they had a, another priest on standby. They had another priest ready to go if something happened. 
They didn't leave anything to chance. The problem is this. We can engage in these types of efforts and we might be able to make ourselves look pure on the outside, but you'll never be pure on the inside. Amen. In, in and of yourself. But we see this image of the substitute pointed forward to the real high priest who would come later, the Lord Jesus Christ, the real high priest. So thus having described Jesus Christ as the great high priest in the book of Hebrews, the Bible tells us how that Christ has come to meet our need as the high priest. Why? Because He's holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Christ, our high priest. 